Five Live. Your call. Are race and culture irrelevant when it comes to sexual abuse? Right. Eight men from Pakistan, one from Afghanistan, sentenced today for sexually grooming young girls in Rochdale. The victims were five white girls, some as young as 13, who were given drink and drugs and passed around for sex. Greater Manchester Police insist race did not play a part, but Simon Danchuk, the MP for Rochdale, disagrees. I think the police are wrong to say that race isn't a key factor in this. This is an issue within the Asian community, a small group of Asian men that have a particular view of young white girls that is completely unacceptable. But Atifa Shah from Rochdale Women's Welfare Association says the men's ethnic background is not the issue. This is just criminal activity of a group of men, vulgar, regardless of their ethnic background, religious background. They wanted to commit and engage in criminal activity and they did that and they approached what was readily available. Our race and culture irrelevant when it comes to sexual abuse. 0500 909 693, text 85058. You're with Five Live from the BBC. It's an appalling story from uh, Rochdale. The men are sentenced today. But are race and culture irrelevant when it comes to sexual abuse? Uh, we're going to be talking very soon to Mohammed Shafiq, who was praised by the veteran Labour MP and crier this morning for being very honest and outspoken on this issue, saying there is a problem in certain communities. He's chief executive of the Ramadan Foundation. He'll be joining us soon. Um, we want your calls, 0500 909 693. And uh, let's speak to Martin Neri. Um, always good to get Martin's thoughts. Former head of both the prison service and uh, children's charity Bernardo's. Hi, Martin. Good morning. Right. And um, and Keith Faz. Keith Faz, hello. You think it's it, you think it's dangerous, this, don't you? That to talk like this is dangerous, and people are like Cryer and from Mr. Dan Shook, the MP for Rochdale, and others who are saying there is something about certain aspects of certain cultures that leads to this kind of street grooming. You think this is these are dangerous words, Keith Faz, don't you? Well, let us see what we first agree on, and that is that these are terrible crimes that those responsible in any community ought to be prosecuted and if convicted ought to be sent to jail so i'm looking forward to hearing what sentence they have been given let us also remember the victims of these terrible crimes why they are put in a position where they are being exploited because in all this discussion i'm afraid we seem to have forgotten the victims and i think it's really important that we look at the causes as to why they're put in this position. Where I part company with some uh, commentators is this view that it is a particular community, in this case the Pakistani community. It's now become wider as the story has unfolded and includes the Asian community. There are 2.8 million Asian people living in the United Kingdom. And if we start saying a particular community behaves in a particular way, rather than give reasons for um, why we think that and produce evidence, then it's dangerous. And what worries me is the fact that the BNP decided to demonstrate outside this trial but that's that, yeah, that, um, rather than others. So I think we need to be cautious about of that. Of course, we something need to like discuss this. It. We need to have an open discussion. Well, that's exactly what we're doing, but yeah, are, we ha are we having an open discussion? Why are well, there? I hope so. Well, I mean, Mohammed Shafiq makes the point that there are a disproportionate amount of from the Ramadan Foundation. He'll right. be with us shortly. I'm waiting for him now. Mm. He's going to be coming into the studio. He says there are. We, he says we need to face up to this. He says elders are not doing enough in these communities. Yeah. Is he? Is he right? No, I think what he needs to say is who are these elders and what was the nature of the conversation. I think it's really important that in a free society, in a multicultural country like Britain, we ought to be able to be discussing these things in an open and transparent way, but it must be based on facts. He's in the studio. I, He's joined us now. He's just I walked in. Constituency. Good well, morning. I, I like the Ramadan. Good morning, Nikki. Uh, right. I, uh, uh, I Hi, think Keith. that they do a very good job. But um, I think... Uh, hello. Um, but I think what is important is that if we have a discussion of this kind, it should be based on fact. Right. And I think <laughs> Let's get the facts from him, then. Thorough, well, we need a thorough... If I could finish, we need a thorough, proper examination bringing on board all the points that we have heard and make sure that we have a thorough inquiry into this right. where everyone can contribute on the basis of fact. You've, you've made that very plain. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, Mohammed Shafiq, what are the elders not doing that they should be doing? 
Well, uh, I, I listened to Keith this morning on, on, on the Today programme as well. And look, I'm not saying that all Asian elders and all people in the Pakistani community are burying their heads in the sand. My experience is I've campaigned against this for six years. I've been the only main Muslim spokesman, Pakistani spokesman, who's been speaking out this consistently. Um, I feel that they, some of them, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them say that this is not rape. Some of them say this is not abuse. Some of them say that this is, uh, this is the girls have asked for it. They've made themselves available. Um, I'm not making this up. It's why, not do, why do they see, why do some of these men, clearly these <coughs> men that we're talking about who've been convicted and will be sentenced today, why do they see certain girls in this way? Are there any, let's just, I mean, let's, let's get to this. Are there any cultural reasons for that at all? No, I don't think there are. I, I think these are inherently evil men who think that white girls are available and are easy and they have their parallel lives, the lives of respectability, where they're married, they have children within the community, and then they have the parallel life, which is uh, nighttime as taxi drivers, takeaway workers, as drug dealers, where they groom and abuse these girls. I, I, I don't think culture has got anything to do with it, but I think race does play a part. We've had 69 recent convictions, of which 58 are British Pakistani men. That's excluding the cases um, that we've seen uh, yesterday in Rochdale. I, I live in Rochdale. I've known about this since 2008, I know that Greater Manchester Police and the CPS have let down these girls and had the CPS taken action when they should have done taken action, uh, maybe uh, more of those victims who were subjected to abuse could have been protected. Why is race relevant? Why don't they see girls of other races in the same way that you, you say race is relevant? Why is it relevant? It's relevant because it, it, it's plainly obvious that all the suspects are Pakistani men and the girls are all white. I didn't see an Asian girl in this particular case. There is one other case in Bradford that's going through court at the moment where the girl is Asian. Um, but in, in all, most of the cases, they're, they're white victims. Um, and there's two reasons for that, I think. One is that the girls are available. Uh, why are our children out in the streets at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning? What do you mean by available? I mean available, for example, if you, try, if you come out with me, Nikki, uh, on a Friday, Saturday night here in Manchester, you will see girls as young as 13, 14, out mm. in the streets, 1, 2 o'clock o'clock two o'clock in the morning we've got to uh, look at why parents allow that to happen and secondly we've over sexualized children in our society and i think that's a, a, a major important point that we've got to look at but uh, I, I welcome keith faz's uh, commitment to hold an inquiry into this i think it's uh, i congratulate them on that and i'm ready to offer whatever support and evidence we can to the committee to make sure we get bottom of this uh, and based on fact not fiction let's hear from carol in brighton and others um uh, andrew in london you go first andrew Yes. Um, um, well, I think it is a, a race and cultural issue. Um, I heard the um, representative of Manchester Police on the television yesterday denying that. But I'd like to turn it round and ask him how many um, uh, how many gangs of uh, English men is he, he investigating who are specifically targeting um, Pakistani or Muslim girls? That's my first point. My second point is one of language. Um, I've heard the men, the perpetrators, described as variously Asians, Pakistanis, Afghans, or Muslims. Um, the victims, meanwhile, are described as um, white girls or white teenagers. Isn't it time that we, um, and I particularly um, put this point to the BBC and other organs of the media, isn't it time that we offered some dignity and respect to these victims and describe them for what they are? They're English girls. We live in England. Rochdale, which is where these crimes were committed, is in England. It's not in Asia. Carol in Brighton. Hello, Carol. Hi there. Um, I think the point I wanted to make was, that, like with any... Uh, sorry, with the, most of these sort of crimes, um, people target vulnerable people. And I'm just wondering, um, in the area, how many vulnerable people, or, sorry, young girls, were of, you know, their ethnicity was Asian or black yeah. or Chinese. Um, and is it just the fact that it's vulnerable people who will be targeted? And if we sort of helped young people through school or some sort of education to have a much better self-esteem, there will be less victims around to be targeted. I'm uh, Martin Neri, this is where you come in, I guess. Uh, 
Thanks very much, Nikki. Can I say, first of all, Keith's point about the victims is an important one here. I've said what I've said this morning because I have met... What have you said this morning for those who've not been, had the pleasure of I've hearing your words? I've said that there is so a race far. element to this, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a, a moment. Because, uh, not in Rochdale, but I've met victims of crimes like this. I've met young girls who have been groomed. I've spent a night shift when I worked for Bernardo's in a northern town trying to get these girls off the streets and somewhere safe. Um, I am not condemning a community. I accept entirely that most Asians, most Pakistanis, completely abhor what has happened in Rochdale. I ran the prisons, the prison service for seven years. I can tell you that overwhelmingly sex offenders are white. I can tell you that online grooming, the perpetrators are overwhelmingly white. But there is considerable unassailable evidence that when we're talking about on-street grooming and trafficking in the north of England, this a, there is a disproportionate representation of Pakistani and Afghan males in Derby, in Leeds, in Blackpool, in Blackburn, Oldham, and now Rochdale. Why not Indian males? Well, well there uh, have been. Uh, I think if why, you look why, at why is it disproportionately... Pakistani and Afghan males. This well, is a question lots of people are asking on, on Twitter. And uh, Martin Neri, any idea? I, I don't know, but can I just say one other thing, which is very important to the discussion. Um, I have never been convinced of the suggestion that this is about preying on white girls. The reality is, and as I've explained, I've done this, and Mohammed, who I think has been extremely brave about this issue, the reality and the challenge for a lot of parents is if you go around city centres, amusement arcades, takeaways, kebab shops late at night in cities, you will not see Asian girls on the streets. They're more strictly parented. They're at home. The girls who are there and make themselves vulnerable to this vile exploitation are all young white girls. We'll have more. We're going to speak to Sue in Westerham and Joel in London, Richard in Grantham, more from Mohammed Shafiq, who you were praised this morning as well by Anne Cryer, the MP on this programme. Don't know if that's good or bad. I, was, I saw the look on it, but there yeah. we are. <laughs> it's it's 9.18. Here's Michelle. This is Five Live Breakfast. Your call. Right, Richard's in Grantham, Joel in London, Mohammed in Bolton, Sue in Westerham. We've got Martin Neri still with us. We've got Mohammed Shafiq. Oh. Richard, good morning. Hello, good morning. It's all yours, sir. It seems to me that uh, it's not taking place totally in private, this abuse. There's a very public element. People are visiting takeaways. And frankly, if I visited a takeaway and I saw evidence of this, I wouldn't be sleeping until I'd made my voice known that I was really concerned about things that happened. What about the social workers in charge of all these girls? who, many of whom are in care. What about the teachers, the head teachers? What about the fan, friends and family around them? It seems to me there is a community problem, and it's a problem regarding the whole of the, the uh, Rochdale community in this case, who seems to me have turned their back on these girls and allowed it to happen. Mm, Mohammed's in Bolton. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nicky. You'll have to excuse me. This is the first time I'm coming on radio, so it sounds nervous. it sounds fine so far. Carry on. Yeah, um, one of the thing, one of the first thing I'd like to say that it's, it's really an appalling thing what's happened. Um, the the other the other thing that I just wanted to point out that although it's not directly a racial issue, this there is a a race and cultural element involved in this. If uh, the same type of issue was happening with the Asian girls, then these people within the Asian community would immediately get found out and they would be dealt with and they know that and they would be frightened of doing it. It's just that it seems that they have picked on the white girls generally because of the ease of how they can, you know, sort of pursue whatever they're trying to do. And, uh, do they have a lesser regard for them, in a sense? Uh, uh, well, th th these general lesser regard, in a sense, that uh, is um, uh, too accessible, isn't it, to go and talk to uh, white girls and, uh, and basically befriend them, whereas there's a lot of reluctance within the Asian um, uh, community itself. You know, there'll be an element of shame involved. Um, the the other thing what 
I'm appalled about is that these people are middle-aged people, most of them, uh, generally young people who've been brought up in this country and have lived in, and grown up in this country, seem to be aware of the cultural issues. They seem to be adaptable to friendship, companionship. Uh, whereas in this element, there's uh, basically, you know, it's, it's just sex that seems to be the the key sort of word that's uh, coming up, uh, which is really, really shameful. And it's, 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 it seems like it's uh, been procured for people who actually involve themselves in this type of needs. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 can I just interrupt and say I don't think Muhammad we should. Shafiq, yeah. Sorry, uh, Nikki, I, I don't think we should use the term sex because sex somehow condones. Uh, it sounds like it's consensual. This was rape. This was child yes, abuse, yes, and we should I, refer I it as. It, yeah. um, in terms of what he says about the, I, I absolutely totally agree, and that's what I've been saying for the last six yes. years. The reason yes. they don't pick Asian girls is one, they're not available. They don't get around in the streets at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, and secondly, um, they know there's going to be a backlash against them within the community. Why, is, why isn't there a backlash against them? Uh, uh, well, there is. I, I, I'm, why uh, isn't there the same backlash that there would have been? Uh, there is. There's a generational change. Uh, so uh, I think Mohammed referred to it. Yeah. Um, uh, yesterday, I, I must have been. Uh, uh, I was in Rochdale all day yesterday. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I must have been uh, stopped by so many young Pakistani men and women who stopped to tell me how disgusted they were uh, and to encourage me on the work that I was doing. Um, and we haven't had the same reaction from the elders. I'm very honest about that. And, th and that's where we've got to put more focus. Is this, well, is, I, is, I is think, notions of community, uh, notions I, of community relevant, Mohammed? Both Mohammeds yeah, here, yeah. Uh, because um, if you know, if if some if some white uh, pervert or white pedophile ring, I don't see that as part of my community. No. I just see that as 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 as, as a monster, as a people who who have done a dreadful, dreadful thing. I don't. Fit, but it's it's that's it, it, that, that sense of community, Martin Neri. It's interesting, isn't it? Community identity uh, is think, key here. I think we have to be very careful. I think that's a really important point you've made. I, I, I don't feel as a white person I have some sort of community responsibility for the white sex offenders I used to lock up in prison uh, and I think it's very difficult to ask uh, Asian or Pakistani communities to address this. What is important is that the police have begun to address this and have been to uh, have started to follow up leads and uh, infiltrate and these gangs and bring them, bring them to justice and that's what's really needed. Uh, Yasmin Alibi Brown joins us. How, how how good of you to come on? Good morning. She was she was all lined up, ready to speak. Ooh. Yasmin Alibi Brown, are you yeah, there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, we've got you. We can hear you. We're to get. What would you like to say about this? We're being we're, in, we're being totally candid and honest. People are calling for that. What are your thoughts? Well, I think you know it's been a very really interesting discussion um, so far. But where I do disagree, and I think we, I agree with Martin, we have to be very careful about this. And I speak as a nation woman, anti-racist and a Muslim. It, that there is a, it isn't that the community should be asked to, uh, to be blamed for this, like the BNP and so on are doing. But I think we, are, we do have a problem about uh, sexuality, and I would say even amongst young um, uh, particularly Muslim men, but not only Muslim men, some Sikh men to others too, about female sexuality. And it works out like this, and this is, this is what the community does have to look at, that there, in it is the tart or the, 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 you know, the, the virgin. And the control of young Asian women's sexuality, sometimes to a horrible extent, the honor killings, the beatings, are very... I, in my mind, tied to this other way they treat white girls. So there's an attitude towards females and their sexuality. Then, whether we like it or not, and there's been a lot of denial, including from Keith Vaz, you know, in even very middle-class families, I've heard parents say to their daughters, I don't want you to be like white girls. Don't start behaving like white girls. So the assumption is all white girls are cheap and easy and immoral. Do you see what I'm saying? So I think we have to look at those. We have this presumption. Can I just come in, Nick, please? Is that Mohammed back? Yes, it is. It First is. time on the radio, sounding like a professional. <laughs> Go on, Mohammed. Yeah. Nick, I think, I think one of the other things is that this type of thing has got to be removed from the political side of things, you know, because this is a human disease. Um, it's, it's one of those things that uh, can, you know, sort of get out of hand. 
As far as the cultural thing goes, there's a cultural issue on both sides. The, 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 as, as we become more and more cosmopolitan, uh, we expect that the people who come from abroad have to understand our culture here. But also we've got to understand their culture. And one of the main things is that generally, you know, British people are very friendly and we look at people in a friendly type of way. And sometimes you've got to sort of uh, draw a line between, you know, friendship, companion, and what the other person is thinking of you. And it's, 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 it's an educational thing as well here. And that's what's, what's got to you know, sort of come up to the front. Uh, as well as the awareness of the community, you know, there, there has to be um, some kind of uh, um, uh, responsibility of the elders who see grow, you know, grown-up people within their own communities Obviously, it's only a minor element here, but uh, there's got to be these people who've got to be identified and they've got to be targeted to say that, you know, this is, not, this is a shameful act. Yasmin, do you want to come back? Yeah, no, I agree with that, but what I am saying is that now that we are talking sensibly about it, and I'm really pleased we are, there are particular, these particular crimes, as Martin has said, uh, in Sir Martin Neary, that it, we're not saying it's you know, a nation problem because more white men abuse girls, blah, blah, blah. And the person who did take action, you know, the, the, the prosecutor was himself a Muslim. Well, I he... thought that was really important, that somebody from within took actions that others before him were either too timid to or regarded these girls as unimportant enough to to fight on their behalf. So I think that's important. But I am suggesting that we within the Asian community and Arab communities too and so on need to look at how we, how young white women are regarded in, within our families, our sitting rooms, our homes. And from that, a kind of, uh, uh, kind of story develops that these girls are easy. And I think we need to look at this. And I also think we need to really, really stop <coughs> pretending that the younger generation is any different. I don't think it is that different. Well, yeah, Yasmin, I've got a lot of respect for you, but I think you're wrong on this. I think the vast majority of young people I've spoken to, I've, I've been campaigning on this for six years. I, I travel up and down this country talking to young Pakistani men, young Arab men, young Muslims, or whatever label you want to use, and the majority of them are disgusted by Let these. Let me tell you a story. My um, daughter is at university. She has friends from all over the place. A number of young Muslim men have told her that she's therefore a loose woman. They, these are university students whom she doesn't even know. They <laughs> come up to her and say, hey, you. And she's mixed race. My husband's white, but she looks Asian. You know, why are you going out with these guys? Well, Yasmin, I, I can you give know, you. I can give. Well, let's hear the rest of Yasmin's story. I mean, this is what, 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 explain Make the relevance it. of this, Yasmin. Make it, yeah, just come in a bit there. We've got, we're, we're, we're a bit pressed for time in this section, just, but Yasmin... Just, just a quick one. Go on, quick, oh, go on, Alan. You've twisted you know, my arm, Mohammed. I, I, I think one of the other elements of this uh, thing is that this agenda crime, more than anything else, these people who abuse these girls have also got their own wives and children at home yeah. who, who they've been dishonest to. So, so it's, 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 it's a wider sort of, you know, uh, element of disgust here that has to be looked at. You see. Yasmin, if this is, is the case that they hold some white women, white girls in a lower regard, is does, does that come down to um, a, a cultural perception of of, uh, you know, of availability of... Yes. Yes. Yes, you've said it better than I could. Well, I... I well, why I, is that? I don't agree well, with I that. Well, I think, no, oh, there, oh. there is a perception. There is a perception. Now, you know, I, I, I we can... Uh, deny it or whatever, there is a perception that young white girls, in particular certain kinds of young white girls, are available and, uh, you know, there is nothing wrong. That, you know, I can tell you that these men, their families today, many of the people in their families and communities will not be condemning them. They, they will be condemning the girls. They will be blaming the girls. I know the, I'm saying things that make people very uncomfortable, and I say it from within. Well, you know what? You I, know? I, 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 sorry, Yasmin, I've got to take issue with you. I've spoken to one of the family of the people this morning. They're not blaming the girls. They're blaming 
their husband, they're blaming their father, they're disgusted by his behaviour. So I think it's quite dangerous for people like Yasmin, commentators who don't seem to be connected with our community. I, I live, no, no, Yasmin, no. I live in Can the I community. No, no. Yasmin, I, I live in that. the community. I live in this community. I've, I've engaged I've, in the community. For you, for you to suggest, Yasmin, that uh, young Pakistani men somehow have this inherent uh, view about women is dangerous. Are there a number, there a small number drivers, of people? There are, are there a small number? If you let me finish, uh, yeah. there are, there are, yeah. if there are a small number of people who <laughs> believe that, does not necessarily mean that the whole no. community yes, is yes, like that. Yasmin yes, um, and no, then Martin. I have, I have been writing about the northern towns for 20 years. I've been, I've been fact, living it for on, 20 years. On, I've on. been living it for 20 it years. It's a slight sometimes, difference. Sometimes, sometimes writing about it live, and living it is completely different. When I'm you live there, uh, you lose track of what is going because you become too much of an insider. I have been in taxis with young pimps who say they are very good Muslims. I was in a taxi with a young pimp four and a half weeks ago we went around town and i was doing a completely different story and every time we were look we saw young girls whether they were asian or white he had things to say about them he couldn't have been more than 24 and i'm sorry he was not in a minority i think to say that i have to live there it's like saying you know nobody can write about afghanistan unless they live there you know we as journalists I, I come and do our job i think it's a ridiculous job, analysis and we you're here for you you can yeah, i'm going to give the last word in this section to Mar martin neri and uh, you, you you can stay with us for a while if you can after you've got to go have you okay yeah he's Ma Mohammed's telling me he's got to he's got to do the television on oh, these 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 stars honestly are coming <laughs> <up>. <laughs> thank you, Ma thank you. Ma martin last word before the the word thank uh, you Mohammed. Uh, i've got to go as well nikki i just wanted to say this. first of all uh, Mohammed should not shout yasmin down when she's making a brave point I would make a slightly different point. It's girls on the streets out late at night who are considered worthless. The fact is most of them have to appear to be white. The suggestion that the sort of people prosecuted yesterday and who will be sentenced today have some sort of moral code which would have made them not exploit a young a Asian girl who they found isolated and alone and vulnerable, I simply don't believe. This is about power and it's about sexual exploitation. Uh, I don't think that there's a, any moral code, it's just that white girls are those on the streets late at night when they should be at home. We've got Ajmal Masrur, um, who is from the Islamic, uh, Isla Islamic, Islamic Society of Britain. Ajmal, hello to you. Hello, young man, how are you? Very well, young man. Dr. Linda Papadopoulos, a psychologist as well. Uh, hello, Linda. Hi. Let's hear from Deborah in Berkshire. Is, Deborah, do you race has, got, has it got anything to do with this at all, Deborah? I, I think if you just look at it as a racist issue, it, it, the problem won't be sorted out because I, I think people all over the country this morning are waking up to this. It's really, really horrific. Um, but it goes for like the last 20 years, and excuse this expression because I don't like it, we've, we've had an underclass in this country and people that live in nice areas just choose to ignore it. They sort of watch Jeremy Carl sometimes and laugh at it, but it's incredibly sad that a young girl feels she's special because she's given a ke kebab and she doesn't have any aspirations like to do well at school and, and actually make something of her life. And I think if we, we've got to look at it, the wider issue, not just, it, you know, why were the girls vulnerable and able to get themselves in this situation in the first place? So we've got to look at it from that and not just of, of this particular um, race perspective. It's a very good point. But Ajmal Masrur, um, are people, Muhammad Shafiq, Yasmin Alibi, Brian and others, um, they say there is a certain problem for certain men because of the race, for, because of cult, you know, they say it in different ways, they disagree with each other, but they say there's something going on here. Is, is race in any way, or culture in any way relevant? No, it's not. I tell you why um, I think this, Nikki, because it's, it's a very simple equation. Anyone who's sick and who does these kind of um, sickly, uh, stomach-churning activities should be locked up for good, as far as I'm concerned. And they should be given uh, exemplary punishment. Now, this has no bearing on their race. There is an issue that we need to discuss, which is, do all people in our community have a healthy attitude to sex and sexuality? And in that discussion, we could then say some racial cultures may have an unhealthy uh, attitude towards sex and sexuality. 
that could be true. All right, let's examine that. Let's explore that. In what way is an unhealthy attitude and why? For example, in certain communities in the Asian-dominated uh, uh, cultures, um, sex has m many occasions been seen as a taboo. Uh, young people are not prepared in the early days to understand what it is it, it is meant by relationship or sex or anything for that matter. Now, these issues need to be identified in early days and given an adequate starting to life. Secondly, many young people don't see a proper and a comprehensive expression of um, what we call moderate intimacy in the lives of young people. Um, when they're young, uh, how many of them actually see their parents hugging or exchanging soft, gentle kisses or expressions of emotions at home? So they grow up not knowing what is emotional intelligence or social intelligence. And that impacts on their development of sexual relationship later on and their approach to an attitude towards girls. These are as a result of unhealthy attitude towards sex and sexuality, nothing to do with race. There are many communities in this country of uh, many different colours in the, the rainbow nation that we are that have un unhealthy attitudes towards sexuality. I agree. And that's, that's one thing we need to deal with. Uh, some, so, so somebody, somebody's mentioning cousin marriages here on, on a tweet. Is that, and it's somebody within the, a, a Pakistani community. They don't want to be uh, named. Um, is that relevant in any sense? Well, you see, cousin marriages is not something new for just Pakistani community. We don't have to go very far to see how smaller peop uh, communities in an island would end up inbreeding and therefore causing biological problems. I think we, let's not put them all t together in one bag. Cousin marriage is a bad practice. We need to do something about educating people to show them the biological as well as the genetically inherited diseases that causes the biggest trouble. But what you're talking about is an attitude problem towards sex, respect towards women. And overall, teaching young people to grow up being emotionally intelligent towards sex and to the opposite sex at large. Mm -hmm. And that's not happening, in my belief, across the board. The fact that our girls and boys are going out on a regular basis uh, you know, basis, evenings, becoming trashed with alcohol, exposing themselves in unhealthy manner, uh, sleeping around. And drugs are involved yeah. here as well. as uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All of these are indications of unhealthy attitude towards sex. And believe me, Nikki, it's got nothing to do with race. Oh, yeah. it's Ca got Caroline, what do you say to uh, Ajmal about what you're hearing? Caroline's in London. I'll bring in Linda in a second. Hello there. I I'd like to say that um, I find that I, I do agree with Ajmal on certain points. I believe it is a cultural problem. What you'll find is um, that amongst uh, Muslim men generally, if, if they're not terribly religious, then they will sleep with non-Muslim girls before they marry. And then when they're ready to marry, they will turn back to marry uh, Muslim girls. Um, because the Muslim girls, you know, are more protected. They're not so easily available. I would like to say that the people that you're talking about in Rochdale, they, did, they disrespect young white lasses who are of the type that we, we've been talking about. But the truth is they're not respecting their own women either. These men are misogynists and uh, uh, sexual abusers. So there's not much respect for their own women either, although it might manifest itself in different ways. Ajmal, is that a point? Yeah, there could be a point in that. And that is uh, that there are people who um, have this uh, sick attitude, but that does boil down to my original point, that they do not have a healthy understanding or attitude towards sex and sexuality. Uh, uh, the lady you're speaking to, in my view, could be um, hitting the nail on the head in some ways, but that is not the entire problem. Thank you so much, uh, Ajmal. You can stick around if you so desire. We're getting lots of calls. Caroline, thank you. Deborah, thank you. We're going to explore what makes men do this and this the kind of group think that leads to this, to be able to dehumanise and treat, treat women as objects. We'll, we'll explore that with Linda in just a second. Here's Michelle. Your call. Uh, Sue Barilovitz, uh, Deputy Children's Commissioner. Hello. Good morning. Uh, Linda's had to go. She has a patient. More important, right. perhaps. But, <laughs> but listen, I'm so pleased that you're there. Um, and so much has been, so many people are being forgotten here. The victims. 
Yes, absolutely. Uh, not, not forgotten by everybody, because of course we haven't forgotten the victims, and there are many, many good uh, charities and of course local authorities across the country, and indeed the police, who are working very hard to support the victims. But what I do want to get across is that um, this is a terrible, terrible case. And the victims who've been identified in this particular trial all happen to be white. But this is not a, uh, a pattern across the country of Pakistani men doing things to white girls. I'm afraid it's a much more worrying situation to that. From the extensive inquiries I've been undertaking over the last nine months, what I know is that, and what I've unearthed, um, is that this is happening in all communities, all ethnicities, all religious groups. Using different it, means, perhaps, it, but it's Using happening. a number of different patterns, absolutely, um, both in terms of the people who are hurting children and exploiting them in this way, and in terms of the victims. Um, so agencies do need to be, and parents and carers, very alert to the fact that there are black and minority ethnic children who are also being exploited in this way, uh, by white people as well as people from within their own communities and indeed young boys as young as 14 and 15 are exploiting girls as young as 11. So it's, it's very pervasive and everybody needs to sit up and take notice and not just think that there's one pattern and that's all that's happening. Stay there. We're going to bring in uh, Neymar in Sheffield and, and David in London. It's not David's real name. Um, hello, David. Hi there. Hi there. And uh, Neymar, good morning to you, Neymar. Good morning. Neymar, what would you like to say? Um, I just wanted to say that this pattern of sexual exploitation is, um, is a national problem. It's not particular to one culture or race. And I think the environment, the national environment that we live in, is an environment of open, laissez-faire attitude to sex in relationships in which people take advantage of these vulnerable people. And um, like the caller before me has said, it's a national problem. I was listening to you earlier. Just imagine um, somebody was saying that the uh, takeaway kebab shop or even uh, nightclub, if there was a young person that, I, you know, I assumed was quite young, and I, if I raised my concern to them, what would they say? They would say, get lost, <laughs> you know. It's none of your business. Even if, if there's a social worker who approached them at that time of the night, they'd say, who are you? Are you my parents or whatever? It is. So wicked think, men are exploiting the over-sexualisation of our society? Well, yes. Yeah, I'd have to say that. I mean, one uh, first part of your programme, you, you, people were saying, oh, it's the Pakistani community, there's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. I just think it's a problem of people taking advantage of these vulnerable people. And if, you know, the B people at BNP are going to come in protest, they're just going to make the situation worse. And, and I think that there is a notion of the Muslim community, Pakistani community should police their own uh, uh, young members and or middle-aged members. It's like, that's not, that's not reasonable in sense you know in the national sense i don't think the authorities would like that would they david do you want to come in yeah um i just wanted to make a, a, a quite a simple point um in the difference in the difference in culture because um like in in the west obviously you know we we, we might date sort of five four or five girls before we get married you know it, we, we go through a process of you know selection that way through dating and, and going out and meeting people and, and the socialising aspect. You know, if, if you're, um, uh, a, a, say, an Asian guy in this country or, or you know, from, from Asia or something, you, you most likely um, won't do that. Most likely it might be an arranged marriage or you might, the first person you meet or <clears throat> a family friend, if it's what, what's called a love marriage, which is, um, and you might, the first person that you meet might be the person you spend the rest of your life with. Um, and 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 for the, for the majority of, of 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 guys from from you know from that culture, that 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 is how it, they want it to be. But if you're of a particular sort of say evil mindset, or or you're a particularly nasty person, and you, you've got that arranged marriage, you, you're with the, that woman for the whole of your life. But you then see the, the Western culture, which I don't think is any worse or any better. But you know where people can date freely and do do what they want, and and that's accepted then you might be able to justify it in your own mind that what you're doing isn't actually wrong. Um, There's an interesting I, other I, side of it, yeah. I, 
Yeah, and, and I don't think that I, I don't think that there's an, necessarily. It's just e- evil people justifying to themselves. You know, it, it, like, like they say, the, the white guys who groom over the internet. You know, it's how how these evil people justify it in their own mind, and they're not doing anything wrong. And so justify it exactly right. Na- Name is that you coming back? Uh, no, no, yeah, it's with me. Oh, sorry. Oh, Sue Barelowitz on the line. Sue You've Barelowitz, DCL. Deputy yes, Children's I Commissioner. I would like to comment about that. Please, please. do, please, um, yes. Really, from my very extensive knowledge, uh, having looked into this, as I say, in very great detail over the last nine months, as part of a two-year inquiry, and I'll put out an interim report in September of this year, uh, this is not an issue of culture, and I put that in inverted commas. I know of no religion or ethnic group or community in the world that condones the sexual exploitation. No, that's not what people, people aren't saying it's condoned. People no. are saying it's an unintended consequence I, of a certain way in which some people are I've, brought up and the way they view the world, which is a corollary of m- much else. I've, I've heard them say that. So I'll just go on to say, and, and uh, so that doesn't happen. And at the same time, I can tell you definitively that there is not an ethnic group or community in this country where there aren't some people who aren't sexually exploiting and very violently abusing children in their midst. Uh, so I include Definitely, white communities... How they justify it to themselves. Uh, well, it's interesting about how people justify it to themselves. I think the point that Neymar was making earlier about, um, in a sense, the objectification of women, some of the contemptuous attitudes that, that some men or males, I would say, is not just men, because I'm talking about younger lads as well, have towards women, is extremely worrying, really, that, that they see females, really, so it's young girls right through to adult women, as objects that can be used and abused in the sense to which they have an entitlement. So it's about power, it's about control, and it's about misusing people. Kim, uh, Kim says by a tweet, Kim sends me a tweet, hello? she says it's a gender misogyny issue, not a race issue. Uh, I would say it is a misogyny issue. Um, we, you know, we are very worried about uh, messages that young people are picking up from pornography I know from the interviews and I've done and the evidence I've taken that there are lads who talk about engaging in group uh, sexual exploitation of children and it was uh, of other children and they say it was like being in a porn movie because they've been watching porn movies and and females are objectified in that environment. So we really as a society need to be thinking about the messages that we're putting out and thinking about thinking very carefully about how we seek to change attitudes. Okay. that people don't feel they have an entitlement to use and abuse Alias children. Kamani, it's only some people, of course. Of course. Alias Kamani joins us, Director of Street, Strategy to Reach, Educate and Empower Teenagers, has worked with Asian, uh, uh, on the Asian grooming problem, if there is such a thing in Keithley. Is there such a problem? Uh, is there, are there, are there cult- Good morning. Are there cultural factors, uh, Elias? Well, look, yes, there are cultural factors. You know, we work across the country with young men uh, who, are, who are, you know, involved in sexual violence. You're saying that as an imam, that there are cultural factors? Yeah. Yes, of course there are. There are cultural, but I think there are lots of other complex factors as well. Uh, you know, we know, for example, wherever there's, you know, drug supply, criminal gangs, and there's always been pimping of girls. Uh, and unfortunately, young men often become channeled into that as well and become part of the gangs that are actually pimping girls as well. But I think it's important to recognize that, you know, we shouldn't just look at the racial and cultural factors. There are other, you know, complex factors at play as well. Most of these men would abuse any girl. This is the thing. And it just happens that in the areas which there are, there is a supply of vulnerable girls who don't have what we call protective factors around them. We've covered that. What are the cultural factors? Okay, one of the cultural factors we picked up is obviously arranged marriages. That, you know, a lot of young men are living in these uh, unfulfilling marriages where there's no sexual gratification at all. They don't connect with their wives. They don't have, uh, not on any level, on an intellectual level, on an emotional level, on a sexual level. But due to cultural pressure, they have to stay within these marriages. So as a result of that, they seek gratification elsewhere. It would have been in prostitution. They would, they would have used prostitutes in the past. And that's how they begin get involved in these gangs where this behavior has become a norm. Now, what we've seen in the last 10 years was that, you know, the girls who were being pimped out and prostituted were 25 to 45. And now we see this shift in that from girls as young as 12 to 19 now. Uh, and that's the key significant shift that took place, that men were able to, uh, these, these predatory gangs were, are very, very astute at identifying vulnerable girls. And then obviously there's an emotional need that they feel through friendship first and foremost. Then they sexualize the relationship and then obviously they abuse and uh, it leads obviously to, to, to pimping as well. 
So the cultural fact that arranged marriages are a significant factor, and I've been saying this for a long time, that, you know, if we continue to have this pattern where men, say, Pakistani men, South Asian men, are in these deeply unfulfilling marriages, then they seek sexual gratification. Do you get criticised from within your uh, community and communities for, for speaking out like this? No, not at all. I, no. I don't think so. So I it's accepted. I mean, it's a growing acceptance that there's... there's no, a... I think, you know, what it is is that... Sexual abuse, sexual violence is difficult for any community to come to terms with, whoever you are, no matter how progressive uh, or liberal or engaged in the mainstream you are. Uh, and it's difficult for the community to come to terms with it. That's why we're providing leadership. We're saying this is well, a problem in our community. Thank you so much. And, and, and Neymar, in the, t in the time available to us, not long, 20 seconds, yes. what would you like to say? Your response, Neymar. Hang on, name stigmatizing, I just wanted to say this issue of stigmatizing arranged marriage is completely out of the water because I know lots of men who are arranged married. Some of them have other fulfilling relationships outside marriage. You have other men marrying two or three wives. They're living happily. And this issue of... Two or three always, wives. Uh, I, it's, it's an issue of oh, it's arranged marriages. I know there's lots of bad things that go on, but it's an issue of... Uh, it's, it's like prostitution. Okay, we're, we're out of time, issue. but I think... you.